Same as, exactly the same as what I've got on the board, you've got a power supply on top. Now, this should say it's designed the same as on the board. It doesn't look like what's on the board. So I'll show you a rough diagram of it here. Hopefully, Andy, you can zoom in on this. Power supply on top, a resistor R1, a resistor R2. So here are my two resistors. One small guy there, one small guy there. I'm going to pretend that I know the resistance of one of them, this guy here, and I don't know the resistance of this. Right? In fact, I've measured this before, it's 82 ohms. So I know the resistance of that, let's say I don't know the resistance of this guy here. Um, so this is my, my two resistors, this is my power supply coming in here, the current can go up here and across, or it can go down and across, and what I'm going to do is put up my galvanometer. So make it look like it's been used in the last, I don't know how long. So at the moment, it's reading zero because I haven't touched anything, so there's no potential difference. Right? I need to turn this on to attach a power supply. It's still reading zero. And now what I'm going to do is basically just change the position of this wire here. And as soon as I do it, you see it moving up. Can you get that, Anthony? Uh, the wire's in the way. Say that again. It's basically on the far side, so it's greater than the scale. Yeah. Now as I start moving it back here, you can all get it? Uh, ideally, this guy here would start moving back. On a good day, that's what no. would happen. Now because I've done this before, because I know anything that can go wrong will go wrong, I'm still confident that this should move right about... <coughs> there we go. Yep. Ah, fantastic. Yay. So back, okay. so somewhere in here, there's a zero point. So I'm going back, 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 yeah. back, back, back. Again, what I'm doing here, just you're looking at two things. You're looking at the dial, and also I'm moving this. Stop. There, stop. stop. Right. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't have to be bang on. We just want to do it for demonstration purposes. So what I didn't do is I note my length. So I think you're now looking at the meter bridge here. So that length is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so it's halfway between 100 and 110. So it's 105, and this is centimeters, so it's 10.5 centimeters. So at this stage, I can just turn this off. So what have I got? I've got my setup here. R1, R2, I changed my galvanometer, and it's even softer to scale. It kicked in here somewhere. My lint AB was 10.5 centimeters, which is 0 0.105 meters. BC, which is this lint here, it became by default, because it's, it's a meter, the whole thing is a meter long, so if I knew one is 10.5, the other had to be 89.5. So that means it's 0.895 meters. Uh, this setup is known as a meter bridge for this very reason. So you use one meter here, it makes it easy to measure. My R2, which I assumed I knew, I had to measure that, and that was 82 ohms. So then all you do is pop it into the formula. R1 is R2 times AB over BC. Remember our proportional constants we just cancelled out. So I put 82 over, and then it's 0.105 over 0.895, and I get a value of R1 as 9.67. So that's telling me or is it 9 point, I don't know my own writing, 9.62. Either way, I think we're out a little bit in the last time I checked. So that's telling me the resistance of the wire is 9.62. So now what I've got to do is change it is, I did this when it was turned facing me. So while it looked like that is a 10 ohm, it's this guy here. Yeah, R1, yeah, that's what I've got to set up here. R1 is the unknown resistor, and it's this guy here, which is the unknown resistor. So what I've got to do now is take this out and just measure the resistance of it, just to double check it. And it should be somewhere about my 9.6, and I think I already it out. In fact, if you don't mind, just hold that up there to... Uh, turn it around the resistance, which is down there. Wait, do you want to just... Uh, hold it up to the camera, probably is the best fit. If you can just stretch it there. And I think my resistance will be, in fact, you'll act as a witness to those who can't see it. It should be 9.6, it's 10 point, it's going down go a little again. bit. So I think it might go down as about 10.2. Mm. So it should be 9.6, it's 10.2, but it's a reasonably accurate way of establishing the resistance. Right? Thank you. So we still have to ascertain, one, what are our other applications of it, but secondly, why this didn't work. Any ideas? There are kinks in the wire. Yep, and you'll actually find that if, as this gets heated up, in fact, it's resistance. Oh, sorry, what happens to the lint as it gets heated up? It expands. It expands. So what I thought was 10.5 here might actually be a little bit longer, and this no longer becomes a meter bridge. So you want to use it at the smallest possible voltage going in, so you've got the smallest possible current, and therefore it doesn't, the wire doesn't expand an awful lot. 
And we'll take a look at that in a minute when we're looking at potential dividers. Okay, so for applications of this, this is used quite a lot where you want to regulate Casper uh, temperature control. So if you've got a cooker or an oven, what happens here, you apply, and I've taken all the parts, so it'll be hard to talk about it, but basically you have your little uh, pointer here in the middle, your galvanometer, and you set it up such that it's rigged up at room temperature at 20 degrees. And you want the cooker, or might be the air conditioning in your house, to stay off if the temperature is between 18 degrees and 22 degrees. Because if it's exactly 20, it'll be going on and off all the time. So if between 18 and 22. Now you've got resistors here. If the temperature goes above 22 degrees, what will happen to this resistance? It's a normal resistor. What happens to the, resi the resistance of a normal resistor? Increases. If the heat goes up, Increases. temperature goes up, the resistance will therefore increase. Therefore, you'll get current going through this part of it here. Remember, it was balanced. I had it finely balanced for my setup. What will happen is current will go in one direction. If it happened to go, so what I can do is say the current is going in one direction. Uh-uh, I need to turn on my cooler, or I need to turn off the heat one or the other. It then cools down, and it goes below 18 degrees. So now the resistance here is going to go what? Down. Down. And therefore, as a result, the current is going to go? That way. The other direction to what it went before. So the, whatever appliance you've got it hooked up to, it will detect whether the current is going one way or the other. And in one way, it will realize that the current, the temperature is too low and might turn on a heater. In the other scenario, it will realize the current is going the other way, therefore the temperature is too high, and it will either turn off a heater or turn on the cooling. So you can use this as a thermostat, as some sort of a, a temperature control system in a house. Alternatively, you can just have it as some sort of a fire alarm. If you've got this in, a, in an alarm, and you might have it set up such that it's not all that resistance to temperature changes, but if that increases by 30 degrees, you'll certainly get a current going through it, and again, that can be used to activate an alarm. So it can be used as an alarm system or a temperature control system in a house. Okay, so far, let's go on to one more system, which is over here.